While the gaming landscape has evolved exponentially with each new console generation, with the likes of Sony, Microsoft, and yes, even Nintendo putting more power than ever before in the palm of players' hands, boss fights have sadly, on the whole, failed to follow suit in the innovation stakes, sticking instead to tried and tested formula for 30 years or more. I'm Jess from War Culture, and here are 10 gaming boss fight tropes that need to die. Number 10. Insta Death. Games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne have conditioned modern day players to expect a challenge. There's a certain school of thought among players that believes if a game is not hard as all hell, it's either A, not worth playing, or B, a Nintendo game. That said, even the most masochistic player out there will tell you that bosses who can kill you in literally one hit simply have to go. Take Final Fantasy VII's Tonberry, for example. Here you have an enemy who, while small in stature and arguably pretty adorable to behold, can decimate your entire party with as much effort as casually swatting away a pesky fly. He's truly a nightmare and could definitely be said to be somewhat unfair, despite the fact that he can, rather obviously, be beaten in the end. There is, however, a subtle yet crucial difference between one-hit kill bosses and enemies in RPGs such as the Xenoblade series, who can kill you easily since they're of a much higher level and are not meant to be tackled early in the game. These are the exception though, and the truly unfair insta-death bosses can and, quite frankly, do one. Number 9. Waste Up Bad Guys Okay, admittedly there aren't that many other ways which spring to mind to represent scale on screen, but showing bosses from the waist up is undoubtedly a tiresome cliché at this point. Every gamer can no doubt pull from memory at least three or four examples of encountering a boss, usually on the roof of a tall building, let's be honest here, who's so huge they can only be seen from the waist up. The Galactus fight in the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes game is a great example of this, as well as a great many other boss fight tropes. Appearing from the waist up, the destroyer of worlds torments and assaults the Avengers and friends on a rooftop, with audible nom nom noms as he fills his otherworldly stomach. The Darksiders series also leans into waste up baddies, as do so many other titles it'd be impossible to list them all. But one thing we as gamers can say for certain is that we're tired of this cliched set piece and hope that developers can find new and interesting ways to represent massive bosses going forward. Number 8. Not really being the big boss after all. That's right, remember getting to that specific point in a dozen different games where it turned out the dude you were fighting wasn't the big boss after all? Oh, you tricked us, you little scamp you. Jokes on us, to which the egg on our chagrined faces will undoubtedly attest. Taking The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess's Zant as one example from a vast pool of potentials, gamers have arguably been conditioned to expect these big M. Night Shyamalan style twists, completely robbing away the shock factor the developers were so obviously going for. Of course, Zant was only a servant of Ganondorf, in much the way that Scarecrow was obviously working for Ra al Ghul in Batman Begins. Bit of a weird comparison, but there you go. No genre is safe from this bait and switch either, as a gamer could easily select a random game from their shelf, one would assume gamers have shelves, and they would likely encounter the old bluff. Another really good example of this one is Orokai in The Beautiful Akami, not to mention Edward Kelly in Neo. Gaming is saturated with I'm not actually the real boss, gotcha. Can you imagine if the new Star Wars trilogy focused entirely on Kylo Ren and Snoke, then randomly whipped Emperor Palpatine out from nowhere for the last act? Madness. Number 7. Temporary Invincibility much of what we're discussing here relates to patterns. Patterns of movement, phases, or the repetition of cycles. And one which comes up time and time again is temporary invincibility. To explain further, each and every gamer on the planet will, at some point or another, enter into single combat with a boss, dodge him for a bit, then deal some damage, only for the boss to, somehow, render itself invincible for 10 to 20 seconds, at which point minions usually spawn in an attempt to overwhelm the player. The latest Marvel Ultimate Alliance title The Black Order is a prime example of this, though it's by no means alone in that category. There, armed to the teeth and ready to roll, are Cap, Tony, Ghost Rider, and Deadpool, when suddenly, whoever you're facing off against retreats from the player and renders themselves temporarily invincible. Why not just do that for the whole fight if you could do that? It's a trick as old as gaming itself, and modern players are savvy enough to see through the facade and recognize it for what it is, a cheap tactic designed to prolong repetitive combat. It has to go. Number 6. Boss Healing 
It is perhaps a safe assumption that few things infuriate gamers more than bosses healing mid-battle. Bosses by their very nature tend to possess more hit points than the regular grunts by orders of magnitude, and many a player has woken in a cold sweat at the thought of one boss or another with hundreds of thousands of HP that they just couldn't defeat. Imagine then the white-hot fury which cascades over the player when the boss they've been chipping away at for what seems like hours, and might have actually been, finally getting their HP down to manageable levels at the expense of every potion and tincture in their inventory, suddenly pops the magic juice and heals back up to full or near full health. Examples of this treachery are everywhere, from the Dark Jedi in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the dreaded Hater Axe in Borderlands 2, to every trainer and their mothers throwing healing potions into the mix during a climactic Pokemon battle. The thing with boss healing though is that it isn't strictly unfair. I mean, if the player has healing spells or potions to use during combat, then shouldn't the bosses well, no. The answer is no. They shouldn't. Number 5. Deflecting projectiles How many boss fights have you played in which your basic goal was to deflect or repel an enemy's projectiles back at them? Yeah, I thought so. To pluck an example out of the air, the fight against the Trade Federation Vulture Droid in Star Wars Jedi Power Battles for PlayStation and Dreamcast perhaps sums this one up best. Playing as one of the many Jedi Knights and Masters, invariably choosing Obi-Wan of course, the player has by this point dispatched battle droids and droidicasts with reckless abandon, deploying force powers in conjunction with the trusty lightsaber. Encountering the Vulture droid boss, all of the aforementioned finesse is unceremoniously cast aside as the player runs left and right avoiding bombs dropped by said ship, which then switches its pattern, see, and fires a steady volley of blaster shots at our Jedi hero. Do we rip it out of the air with the force, throw our lightsaber at its engines, leap atop the moving vehicle and slice off its cannons? Of course not, we just deflect the blasts back at it. This trope is definitely not limited to Star Wars games though, with everything from 3D Mario titles to Ori and the Will of the Wisps getting in on the action. Number 4. Three Hit Formula Okay, so it's mainly Nintendo who are guilty of this one, but they're not alone by any means. Think back to your favourite, or least favourite for that matter, Mario, Zelda, Kirby or Yoshi game and you'll no doubt recall a boss or five who require you to hit them three times in order to defeat them and continue on your merry way. The first hit can usually be dealt quite easily as the boss is still moving relatively slowly at this point and hasn't evolved into a new form. More on that later. Nor have they amended their, yep, patterns. After this first blow has landed, the boss is a bit annoyed. At this stage, the boss usually speeds up their movement, making it more difficult to land that second hit and may even throw a few minions at you in the meantime. Land the second hit, however, and the boss is now well and truly furious, and will speed up further and may even sprout some spikes or something equally nefarious. All the better to swat the dastardly hero. Managed to successfully land a third hit on the boss and he's toast. We know, we get it, just stop. Number 3. Hand slash weapon stuck in the environment This one is perhaps the most ubiquitous example on the entire list and can be found in countless action adventure games from the last 20 years. The player has hacked and slashed their way through hordes of monsters and minions, lackeys and lizards, and now they're face to face with the boss, assuming it really is the boss of course. The bold baddie goes through their repertoire of moves and attacks, forcing the player to dodge and defend for their life. All of a sudden the boss takes a huge swing and plants their sword, axe, claw, fist into a tree wall, pillar floor, locking them in place while they struggle to free said implement. There's the player's window, attack the stricken boss for a few precious seconds while they wiggle their tool loose. That's surely the path to victory. Again, this is something we know without even knowing we know, you know? It is so commonplace, in fact, that players could be forgiven for scanning the combat arena for trees, walls, pillars and the like immediately upon beginning a boss fight, or at the very least staying close to said environmental feature just to see if the boss hits one and subsequently gets stuck. Spoiler alert, they probably will. Number 2. Quick Time Events Admittedly, this one is not as prevalent today as it once was, but it still refuses to go away. Quick time events, it seems, are the gift that keeps on giving. Back in the mid to late 2000s though, players couldn't so much as go to the bathroom without having to hit square, square, triangle, square at exactly the right moment. Failing the QTE in this example doesn't bear thinking about. 
Games of all genres were quick to leap aboard the QTE train via a button combination, obviously, when this idea was first popularized, with titles like Resident Evil 4 and the Force Unleashed games best showcasing the QTE. In the former, it was commonplace to see hero cop Leon Kennedy running away from environmental hazards, shaking off persistent enemies, or most importantly, finishing off bosses via a sequence of button presses or convoluted movements of the Wii Remote. The latter was much the same sort of fare, albeit more limited to the all-important boss fights than general gameplay. QTEs were used in the Force Unleashed games to pick up and crush ATSTs, defeat rogue Jedi, and even face off against Vader and the Emperor. QTEs had their time in the spotlight, but now they really need to go. Number 1. Obvious and Glowing Weak Points this entry, somewhat ironically, should have been obvious. Whether you're an avid Xboxer, a PlayStation person, a Nintendo nut, or you haven't played a game since the Sega Mega Drive, you'll still have encountered this phenomenon. Again, the players fought off the hordes of hell and made their circuitous way to a large ominous chamber. The door immediately slams shut behind them and the music changes. Out steps the entity we can only assume is the real boss shown either in full or from the waist up. How can the poor lowly gamer possibly hope to defeat such a creature? By deflecting its projectiles back at it? Probably. By hitting it three times? Maybe. But where to hit it, the player wonders. Oh, I don't know, how about that massive, glowing, super obvious looking weak spot? We're looking at you, Metroid Prime, Star Fox, Dead Space, Lost Planet, Gradius, Shadow of the Colossus, R-Type, most of the 3D Mario games, and virtually every Legend of Zelda title, the list goes on. For decades, we've been spoon-fed and signposted to victory by bosses literally wiggling peacock-like their massive, glowing bits at us. And it's long since time this trope was banished forever. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment box if you can think of any other gaming boss fight tropes you reckon need to die. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. As always, if you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists. Thank you.